Uh, all right, then uh, could somebody lead us in prayer? Salami, are you comfortable to lead in prayer? Okay, not sure if Salome is able to uh, connect. Um, so, uh, Abhinash? Yeah, Pastor, am I audible? Hello? Yes, yes, very much. Okay, okay. Go ahead. thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yes, yes, I, okay. I can hear you. Sure, sure ma'am. Okay, let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful time and the moment that you have given us lord jesus this morning we praise you master we worship you master lord jesus we look to your beauty father god and father god as we are going to study this time father god we give ourselves into your mighty and father god that your revelation will come father god and your understanding will come lord jesus we ask you that wisdom father god a fresh wisdom and the knowledge father god we pray that lord jesus we submit our nancy ma'am into your mighty and father god let let us speak your words, Father God, Lord Jesus, and he, as he will speak, Father God, it will edify and sanctify our body and mind and soul, Father God. We pray this time, Lord Jesus, we submit all things into your mighty hand, Father God, and we ask this prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. I'm hearing your voice after a long time. I'm happy, uh, you know, that uh, you're here and <laughs> yes, you're part Thank of this so class. Yeah. Yeah, yes. sure. Right. Uh, also, uh, uh, happy to have, uh, who's this I'm seeing? Hope, hope I'm seeing you after a long time. You doing well? Yes, Pastor, I'm, I'm doing well and uh, I thank God for his grace. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, so glad to have you uh, back here in class. And I think Simran also is joining after a while. Uh, she's been there on some of the calls, but uh, yeah, good to have you as well, Simran. All right, so good. Um, okay, Salome is unwell. So uh, yeah, take care, Salome. We'll keep you in our prayers. Uh, and uh, today we will continue uh, with regard to the spiritual gifts, we were talking about the flow of the spiritual gifts, and yesterday we touched on uh, we have clear one would be that all can flow in the gift of prophecy. We can take turns one by one. Uh, we um, are supposed to exercise all the gifts of the spirit, and especially the gift of prophecy, in an orderly manner. We saw that the spiritual gifts in us need to be stirred up. We can have the gifts, but those gifts will not um, be useful if we don't put it to work. So the spiritual gifts need to be stirred up. And we saw how praying in the spirit uh, and uh, prayer in general would help activate and stir up the gifts for us. We also saw how gifts can be imparted from one person to another person, and also they can be activated. Okay, so uh, that is something that we have looked at. We uh, lastly we touched on the fact that faith is essential for the operation of spiritual gifts, and according to one's faith, you know the gifts would work. So if one is moving in greater faith you can have a greater demonstration of the gifts of the spirit through one's life and we saw that scripture from romans 12 6 where paul teaches us saying having their gifts differ according to the grace that is given to us let us use them if prophecy let us prophesy in proportion to our faith so the operation of the gifts it is initiated through faith and also it is proportional to our faith. Okay, So faith is to be built up in order for us to move in this. Now, coming back to a couple of other basics that we've already talked about several times. We said that prophecy, as per 1 Corinthians 14.3, uh, this is the simple gift of prophecy. It is meant for us to edify, exhort, and comfort people. And that is how we are going to, um, uh, you know, that, that is the primary impact of the simple 
prophetic word. But we also know that the prophetic word is not limited to just that. It can provide direction, it can provide correction and warning from God. Uh, however, when one flows in the simple gift, generally we sort of, um, the, the kind of words that we receive are those of encouragement. Uh, and uh, we touched on another basic, which is that all can prophesy. I think we are quite clear on that. Uh, now, the next insight here is that we prophesy in part. Okay, So why am I telling us all these practical uh, aspects? Because we are going to practice. Okay? We, With the help of these insights, we would want to flow in the gift of prophecy. Now, if all of us were in a classroom and uh, we had an in-person meeting, I would have loved that, you know, and uh, as a as a team, we do this uh, for our uh, a Bible college course, as well as our weekend schools, we have people coming in and Then there is a practice session where we show the gift of prophecy. Uh, and you know, uh, since we are meeting online, we'll see how best we can do this. Uh, but whatever I'm going to discuss from now, it is to help us in the practice of the use of gift of prophecy. Okay, so uh, please uh, listen in carefully. All right, now we prophesy in part. This is to say that when we receive a, you may say, word from God, that might not be the revelation of a person's entire lifetime. Okay? Because uh, sometimes we have this um, understanding that God will reveal everything. When we look at a person or if you're like me, I used to think, oh, if a prophet sees me, what if they know everything about me? You know, like, please escape. Uh, they should not look at you or they should not uh, call, call, upon, call you for a word. You know, to give a word because they know everything about you, but that's not true. First um, Corinthians thirteen nine it says, "For we know in part, and we prophesy in part." So even a prophet or a person releasing a prophetic word does not have complete knowledge. Who is the one who has complete knowledge? It is God, and that is why we say, you know, "He's an all-knowing God, omniscient God." Only God is all-knowing. No human being, no other spirit is all-knowing. And we must be very clear on that. We only prophesy what is revealed to us. So in ourselves, we do not have uh, knowledge of everything. So we know in part and we prophesy in part. So nobody can read another person like a book. We only know what God reveals to us and that's the only thing that we release okay so uh, that is something for us to understand now here's the next thing about prophecy all prophecy must be judged just because you know, i say something and i call it i'm here it, it is the word of the lord i'm i'm telling you the word of the lord thus says the lord it does not mean that one's words should be um, received and digested simply because you know, they were they were presented as the word of the Lord. Because scriptures tell us, 1 Corinthians 14, 29. Uh, remember I said in 1 Corinthians 14, Paul lays down the order in which the uh, exercise of spiritual gifts must be done. So then he says, let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. Okay, we'll, we'll um, discuss why this would be important. So he's telling the believers, yes, share your prophetic word, but give an opportunity for others to judge. Okay, now moving on to another scripture. First Thessalonians 5, verse 19 to 21. It says, Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast what is good. So, in continuation, do not despise prophecies, test. 
test all things even the prophetic word is to be tested and we have to take from it what is good and hold fast to that now the reason why this is important is simply because god is perfect the gift is perfect in this case the gift of prophecy it is perfect but the vessel which should be you and me you and i we could um we could we could be incorrect in the way we process the word that has been revealed to us okay an example now let's say i am praying for somebody okay and i see musical notes remember we said god speaks in dreams visions uh, dark saying symbols so as i'm praying for somebody you know, i see these musical notes and i'm not well versed with musical notes so okay i see some musical notes i just know their musical notes now when i prophesy i need to in interpret what i see now by the spirit of god uh you know as we uh, train ourselves we get better and better you know hearing from god and interpreting that word now when i see these notes i could say that brother god has uh, blessed you with the gift of music and uh, god wants you to sing more or i could say brother god has blessed you with the gift of music and god wants you to play your instruments skillfully okay now what if i interpret it as oh this person is a singer and god is blessing him in the skill of uh, singing and i release that word over him now that person could later tell me uh, that uh, oh no sister i actually don't sing i can't sing you know i just can't sing but i have a um i have a store uh, or i have a business uh, of musical instruments i sell musical instruments so you see what god revealed to me is correct something to do with music but if i am not careful enough in my interpretation of what this is supposed to be i end up saying something very different from what it is okay so you know things like that now i might see an aeroplane as i'm praying for somebody and i could say you know i think god is taking you to the nations but it could mean something completely different somebody in his family could be traveling and you know he could be praying about that that person might turn around and say uh, no 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 pastor you know i i'm not going anywhere but you know my wife is uh, going some place on work or uh, you know uh, somebody in my family is traveling and i'm concerned about that and i'm praying for their safety so what god reveals is very perfect but i could be wrong or incorrect or there could be an error in the interpretation on the side of the person prophesying or the vessel okay so that is the reason why we must allow prophecies to be judged who would judge the prophecy we you know generally say this now if there is a prophetic word um, uh, we ourselves are responsible to judge it as as well as we can then in addition to that if if at all it's uh, you know possible suppose i'm going to a different church and uh, the pastor there says okay sister you pray over people now it would be nice if there are leaders from the church uh, around who can hear what i'm saying because i don't want to say something which you know if at all in my interpretation there is a there is a mistake right somebody who's listening the believer who's listening will follow it apply it you know if he doesn't know he or she doesn't know that they need to judge the prophecy they'll just straight away go ahead and apply it but if there's a leader 
around that would be good or if there is a prophecy for the church that the lord is giving me i will first submit it to the pastor and say pastor this is what i sense god telling me you know then the pastor might say yeah true sister this is in line with the vision that god has given us and the things that we have been do doing for the past 15 years it's it's very much you know in that direction you know what you're hearing is correct so being able to submit to you know the leadership there or the eldership there is generally very helpful because then whatever one is saying you know there are others to judge it and this is another reason why prophetic teams are so helpful because when we prophesy in a team setting it happens okay? uh, we'll come to that a little later but i remember once when we had gone out on a mission trip and we were prophesying together and it was the most amazing experience because different ones of us were getting a word which was a confirmation of what the other person was saying so we were very encouraged you know i would see something and uh, you know another girl was with me she would see something and it was uh, it was so accurate to and relevant to the person situation you know for whom we were praying so uh, teams are also very helpful when we are prophesying okay so i'm just moving on quickly so that we can we can uh, look at all these practical insights and then uh, be able to flow in this gift then how and when we deliver the message is in our control now sometimes we have this um, notion that when we are baptized in the holy spirit or let's say when we are graced by the spirit to release a word of prophecy that the holy spirit will come upon us in an uncontrollable way where uh, you know we have no uh, say of our own you know you're all shaken up or you're just you know, out of control and you have to release the word of god well a compulsion and a seriousness uh, or the burden of the word we feel we sense that but the way we want to deliver the word is in our control first corinthians 14 verses 32 and 33 they say and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets for god is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all the churches of the saints so when we are prophesying it's very much in our control how we want to do it when we want to do it you know i could i could just go to someone and say sir i think uh you know god is encouraging you and you know he's saying don't fear uh, that he will take care of your financial needs so i could just do it that way or i could i could say it louder i could say you know this is what the lord says god will take care of so it's completely up to that word so it's not that god is going to force us to release that word in a particular way or let's say as i'm praying for somebody i'm really concerned that something is not right in that person's life or they are going to make a wrong choice or they're going to make a wrong decision and uh, maybe while the uh, the gathering is on i don't really want to bring it up because you know there's no opportunity to discuss that matter so instead of telling that person come you know i want to tell you something this is what god says you know you you are in a wrong relationship i might i might do it differently i might be like okay hey uh, you know do you have some time tomorrow can i call you or can we meet up for a cup of coffee i just thought we can talk and then when i catch up with this person that might be a more appropriate time for me to have this discussion with the person maybe they're coming into our uh, counseling uh, place and then we say okay uh, while i was praying for you i was concerned i felt you know you're going to uh, you, you seem to be uh, making a wrong decision would that be correct uh, what uh, uh, does it make sense to you and then maybe they might open up and say actually yes you know i'm going through this and uh, so you have an opportunity to talk okay so these are all the considerations when we release a prophetic word sure the moment you see something you have to say it uh, and you have to say it in a certain way not at all 
because the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Meaning, I rule over my spirit. I can do it the way I need to do it. So, uh, it's a beautiful verse. It says, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. So, the word must be released in a fitting manner. Now, what if you know, this is a young person and uh, you know, they have a, a, some sort of a wrong relationship and um, I literally shout at them and release that word and say, this is wrong in your life. For all you know, you might lose an opportunity to build up that young person because of the way what you saw, what you said is correct or what I said is correct. But the way I said it, the person might just shut the door on me and say, okay, whatever. If this is this is God and this is, uh, you know, God's grace, they might be offended and think, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to talk to that pastor. You know, So th all these things happen because the correct, perfect word was not delivered in a fitting manner. So everything we receive can be released in a fitting manner so that it does the work that it has been uh, given uh, for it to do. So we can bear that in mind. The prophetic word must be released in a fitting manner. Okay, I'm moving on to the next uh, thought here. Prophecy can flow along with other gifts. Now, I think I have already shared this. Um, Yes, for our convenience, we classify spiritual gifts as revelation gifts, vocal gifts, so power gifts. This is for our understanding. But when one is flowing in the gifts of the spirit, we must not get caught up. What gift is this? Uh, it's a vocal gift. What gift is this? It's a, not required. As long as it is really blessing somebody, it's good enough. And generally, the gifts flow in a package. What do I mean by that? Maybe you're just praying over somebody and you feel like, okay, I need to pray in tongues. And as you're praying, you know, you get the interpretation of the tongues and you begin to speak that over that person. And as you're speaking the interpretation over that person, that person might say, I just got healed of something. Maybe the gifts of healings are in operation or, uh, you know, something like that. So these gifts are flowing together. As you are praying for the person, uh, you might receive a word of knowledge uh, about maybe the person was looking for um, uh, their purse that they have misplaced. And suddenly you say, hey, uh, I, did you misplace your money? Uh, could you please go back and check in such and such a place? I think it could be there. So it could be, uh, your your prayer and then a word of knowledge and a miracle happens at the same time or you discern something um, uh, at that moment. So these gifts usually work as a package. So don't get caught up in the technicality of that. Just flow. If, if God is flowing, um, uh, the spirit of God is manifesting the gifts in different ways. Just go with it because at the end of the day, people are getting blessed by it. Okay. The next uh, point here is that we must never be hasty to say, thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord is the common um, expression with which you know, people release a word of prophecy. Thus says the Lord. And then, you know, they say, okay, God is saying, I will, I will bless you. I will increase you and so on and so forth. Even if we are very confident that our interpretation is accurate, it is better to avoid sin, thus says the Lord. Reason being, many people do not know that they can judge a word of prophecy. They feel uh, that it is sinful to judge a prophetic word. So the moment you say, thus says the Lord, they will just take it. If, let's say, uh, someone says, thus says the Lord, no, you are... Uh, you are going to uh, you are going to China uh, in the month of June. Now, if this person does not know to judge the prophetic word, he will gather all the money that he has. He will quit his job. He will make all the arrangements to go to China in the month of June. Okay. So uh, whether they go or not, six months will go into the preparation of you know, going to another country because they don't know that they have to really seek God and 
have a confirmation that this word is really from God. So people get stuck when you use the term thus says the Lord. So what is a better way of releasing a prophetic word? You know, we could say something like um, the I, uh, I sense uh, God would want to take you to um, another nation to uh, preach the gospel. Okay. Uh, and when, when you say something like that, I sense my sensing could be right or wrong or you know, you could use terms like I, I feel in my spirit or uh, uh, I, I, I see something uh, in my spirit. Uh, does it make sense to you? So you're leaving it sort of um, open ended and then, you know, they, they can fill in, they can give their opinion and they can know that, OK, you know, I can I can think about this. I can pray about this. I can get a confirmation on this. Uh, so. That's a better way to um, uh, share. Okay, there's a comment. I what is it that says, "The Lord, today you will be happy." I think I'm a real prophet. Oh, okay, okay, okay. He's just. Uh, Taking it from what I said there. All right. So it's better to say that we sense something. Okay, uh, and then the word can be judged. Now, does it mean that anyone who says thus says the Lord is wrong? You see, sometimes, some occasions, you and I may need to use that phrase because let's say somebody is in rebellion, somebody has gone away from God. Now, while you are praying for that person and you're going to release the prophetic word, you very strongly sense use that phrase thus says the Lord because God wants to get that person's attention. Okay, so. We're not saying that you just cannot use it. Of course you can, but be sparing uh, about the use of the phrase, thus says the Lord. Uh, moving forward, when we talk about uh, the prophetic gift and the release of prophecy, a couple of things that are very important. We need the proper motivation. Okay, Why? Now the why is always the most important question to answer. Why am I doing what I am doing? So the proper motivation would be the edification of the uh, church. It would be the strengthening of the people of God or, you know, prophecy is also applicable. You can bless unbelievers with it. But the point is we want to bless others. Okay, First Corinthians 14, 12 says, even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Paul has uh, very clearly stated, pursue spiritual gifts, earnestly desire the gifts of the spirit, especially that you might prophesy. Now this earnest desire is for what? Is it to be recognized as you no know, one who hears from God or you are a prophet? affirmation of people sometimes that is the biggest distraction for us we get caught up in that instead our motive has to be very clear now i want to get better at hearing from god i want to get better at prophesying i want to be very accurate and i want to uh, be sensitive all the time and hear from god all the time but why do i want to do that so that the church is blessed so that people are blessed. Not because I want people to say, oh, this person so godly, you know, so anointed, um, uh, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, people, the, the challenge is also that people try, they, they could be genuine, okay, they could be genuine, I'm not uh, uh, pointing fingers at them, but, you know, sometimes there's it feels like flattery where people say, uh, oh, God speaks to me through you, sister, and you, know, you are so strong, prophet. But you know what? We have to work on keeping these things away. Like, okay, yeah, okay, people are saying all these things, wonderful, glory be to God, but here is my motive. You know, I, I need a pure motive, which says that I will excel in the gifts of the spirit, especially in the prophetic gift, so that... I can be a blessing so that the Holy Spirit can manifest himself in the lives of the people through various gifts. Okay, uh, Not to promote 
oneself or to promote one's gifts um, but to serve so if the motive is to serve you you would find that you know uh, your your conscience is very clear you know why you're doing it you you really don't want um, the uh, you know, what fame or applause uh, that comes with it okay now other some of the other important things for us to know is separate your spirit from personal experiences now we all have um, experiences which are good and bad when we move in this gift of prophecy uh, let's say negative experiences okay, negative experience maybe someone is going through um, a very rough uh, relationship with their parents or there could be a challenging marital relationship now if you're not careful enough our soul and what our soul is going through can rub off on our prophetic word so uh, just understanding let's say you know you know uh, if, if a husband is now when he is prophesying over women you know you could carry that he might really give some hard and harsh prophetic words a wife is upset so when she's prophesying over that to that so i think that uh, we have to be careful about personal prejudices um so to be healthy uh in healthy not just physically but you know we we also look at health in our soul so i have to deal with my own my own um, prejudice prejudices uh, you look at a certain minister from a certain place maybe you have a bad experience in that uh, particular region so you think everybody would be like that minister so when the prophetic word is released it could be a negative word uh, you know not hard to say something negative but i feel that ministers from that region are not good. Uh, or say when we are prophesying someone uh, if i have quit my job and uh, you know i feel okay uh, class uh, apologies <laughs> i'm not sure what is happening with the internet uh, my alternate internet is also not working but uh, i think you can hear me so i'll, I'll just go ahead so i'm talking about um, personal prejudices to be uh, to for one to um, strengthen themselves spiritually okay spiritually as well as in the soulish area to keep ourselves uh, healthy and overcome our own personal prejudice so i was saying that let's say one has uh, uh, experienced uh, uh, one has had a positive experience uh, in quitting their job to do the work of the ministry if i'm not careful enough i might end up telling everyone i meet to quit their job to uh, do the ministry but we know that that's not uh, a requirement all the time it's only based on the call that god has for different people that he may want people to completely uh, be in ministry or you know maybe uh, have a job as well and then do ministry so uh, one needs to be careful now if we are not careful enough what happens is uh is sometimes sometimes you know uh, people become so so they are full of prejudice um, that the prophetic words can come as warnings and judgments you know in where every time you hear a certain person speak it could be a warning a judgment because uh, they could have become very critical 
of others maybe they expecting they expect perfection of themselves at all times so when they are speaking over someone it's you know they're expecting perfection and they don't see anybody as perfect so constantly warning judging uh, people and uh, instead of uh, encouraging uh, people strengthening people it really breaks their spirit so whatever word even when i'm i am in the prophetic ministry i really have to check myself my soul the health of my soul because um, god's word you know, it reminds us that it is the goodness of god that leads people to repentance it's not my constant nitpicking and uh you know my my blaming others or releasing judgments on others which will scare them and make them turn to god also the nature of god you know we have to understand because our god is a god who is a very merciful gracious and slow to anger so that can be a words of judgment that he gives us and warning but as i've shared earlier uh they are fewer as compared to the words of encouragement that one receives okay now moving forward we uh, should be committed to speaking faithfully or remaining silent now there's a very beautiful passage uh, in the book of jeremiah uh, two verses from there i will read jeremiah 23 verses 16 and 28 it says Thus says the Lord of hosts do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you they make you worthless they speak a vision of their own heart not from the mouth of the Lord the prophet who has a dream let him tell a dream and he who has my word let him speak my word faithfully what is the chaff to the wheat says the Lord so basically from this these verses what we understand is that when god gives us a revelation then we speak it we release it but if god does not give us a now word or a prophetic word what could we do we have to simply be silent so as much as it takes faith to say what god is revealing to us it is going to take faith to remain silent if god is not revealing something to us the problem is we we want to prophesy and so sometimes you don't hear from god and in those moments it's really a test of character where uh, maybe we've gone on ministry to a certain place and they are expecting us to release all these mighty prophetic words over them but when you're praying there's like connection is there but you know there's no uh, there's no transmission like nothing god is not saying anything in those moments you could just pray a prayer of blessing over people and say you know whatever you know from the word you know god bless the work of their hands i pray that you will give them wisdom i pray that you will give them direction i speak your protection over their lives in the name of jesus so what are you doing you're basically doing your normal prayer over a person because there's nothing new that you're hearing from god and which is okay you know don't be under pressure to release a prophetic word every time so as much as it is a test to release a prophetic word it is also a test to remain silent if god is not saying something and i've done that many times you know i prayed for people and i've said i'm so sorry i don't think there is anything new uh, that i'm hearing from god so can i just pray for you uh, can i just speak god's wisdom over your life and then you just go ahead pray for that person uh, and uh, you know be done with it now is there a risk that people think oh this pastor is not flowing in the gifts of the spirit this pastor is not anointed yeah it's okay if people say that about us for being faithful i think it's okay it's all right so uh there this is really a test we either flow in uh if when god reveals we release the word or we remain silent if god is not saying anything okay so the next thing would be to build and maintain godly character now this uh, we have talked about in the code of honor we've talked about when we spoke about kingdom builders that character uh, is very important and i think earlier also in our uh, 
this course i said that the character is the wine skin which holds the work of the holy spirit so if one is not mm, uh, faithful or one is not uh, a person of integrity uh, then you know uh, the the flow of the gifts of the spirit can bring a sort uh, bring some applause and affirmation from the people but over time what happens is uh, even people will lose their trust okay and in those moments even if god is speaking the right word to us it becomes very challenging because what we are saying is correct but we've lost that credibility okay uh, and so credibility uh, character integrity credibility with people it's very very important um, and uh, over time we must develop a character and that credibility as well so the person behind the ministry the person behind the gift is very important and uh, you know we must walk in the spirit we must uh, um, you know really walk in humility um, and we must walk in uh, integrity in alignment to the word of god uh, all that uh, becomes very crucial when we want to flow in the gifts of the spirit now uh, moving forward i'll just try to cover as much as i can because i was hoping we can finish but uh, anyway um, so do not base your identity in spiritual gifts uh, when we begin to flow in the gifts of the spirit and this happens to a lot of us um, the moments when we hear from god we get all excited and uh, we we minister but in times when we're not getting a revelation it couldn't it may not be that you are not uh, tuning into god but it could just be that god doesn't want to speak about you know certain things in in that time uh, so i mean it's okay we should not become so tied to uh, ministry and the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit that it affects us personally or it affects our identity personally when you know this is not happening okay so uh, that is to say that i must be firm and grounded in my identity in christ jesus you know uh, as a child of god as one who is redeemed you know as as a, 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 a someone who is loved by god and that should be enough for us whether or not you know these the ministry gifts are flowing out of our life and all of that yes it's important because there is a call of god and we saw you know some people go to the extreme of saying oh first uh, corinthians 13 talks about love you know the uh, greatest of these is love so love is enough why do you need the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit but we also see that that same writer paul said earnestly desire because there is a blessing to the body of christ through the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit so it's not one or the other we want both uh, but uh, we must not our identity must not be so tied to uh, you know these gifts that uh, that you know really brings us down if the gifts are not manifesting okay so we must be f- not become insecure Uh, uh or we should not have misplaced identity okay now moving forward uh we must know what the word of god says and i i have talked about this earlier uh one scripture if you if you can uh, remember that that will be helpful 1 john 5 7 uh, it simply says that the spirit and the word agree the spirit and the word agree so uh, when we hear from god there is an element of interpretation and i've talked about talked about this and i've also said that excuse me we must process that word for interpretation when i know the word of god then it's easier because what the holy spirit is saying will be in line with the character of god it will be in line with the revealed will of god it will not be completely contradictory for example okay, i'll give you a very um, you know obvious example i have heard people uh, say this um, 
you know i heard a friend of mine uh, when i was studying and she's from a different uh, country so she was saying that um, you know uh, the prophet said that the person that you are married to is not uh, god's will for you um uh, you you need to find somebody else okay and um, uh, this is what the lord is saying that he will bring somebody into your life and i'm just listening to this and i'm going have you read your bible you know marriage is a covenant how can a prophet uh, come and tell you that you're married to somebody and uh, it's not valid it's not biblical it's not scriptural now my question would be how can the holy spirit say something which is contradictory to what god has already revealed in the word of god in the logos now she has every reason to reject that prophetic word because it's not biblical now if the prophet is uh, uh, you know poor in his knowledge of the word uh, and unfortunately in this case you know uh, this friend of mine i i was amazed i was aghast i'm like what are you saying how can this even be a prophetic word you know so things like that you really need to know the word of god 1 john 5 7 have that very clear whenever we're ministering in the prophetic have that very clear the spirit of god will not tell us something that the word of god is not in agreement with if at all there is a contradiction you and i have every right to question that prophetic word okay so i see that we have uh, run out of time we will stop here very very crucial and practical things that we are learning from god's word hopefully next week we will have some time for a practice session uh, on the uh, class here okay yeah hopes uh, comment there all right so uh, can we just close with a word of prayer anyone could you please uh, pray and close please Okay pastor I will pray. Father we bless you for the great day that you have lavished to us. We have learned a lot. We thank you for pastor Nancy who have used her to next class may your holy spirit help us to understand all that you have for us we pray in jesus name amen amen thank you thank you everyone god bless you have a good weekend uh yeah i will release the assignment by tomorrow should release so yeah please uh, look out for that okay. thank, you. Thank, you, thank, thank you 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 so much bye Thank you. Bye.